McDavid. Moves in, McDavid goes upstairs! What a goal! Hey guys, how's it going? It's Etanios here. Welcome to episode number 11 of this NHL 21 Custom League Draft to Glory franchise mode here in Kelowna. If you guys have missed any episodes up to this point, go up into the top corner of the video. Also, if you're new to the channel and haven't yet, please go down below. Consider subscribing. It only takes a couple seconds. YouTube's telling me 70% of you guys haven't subscribed yet, and I would really appreciate it if you... Uh, would do that. Also, if you do enjoy this video, go down below, drop a like on the video again. Only a second really helps out the channel. And uh, yeah, anyways, let's get to some comments here. All right, so last episode, I kind of left you guys with the question of should we, you know, should we implement trading in this series? And you guys, a lot of you actually were for the idea. Um, like Duke Storm here and Arvid Berggren said yes, and uh, I think a one year or one trade a year would be a great rule addition, um, or a great yeah a great rule addition from Duke Storm there. Um, we had another comment here a little while back. It was from uh, it was from Rory Beatham saying it would be nice if you could trade the players for draft picks again. You know, just backing up that point more, saying yes, that would be really helpful and. Uh, the other two comments we had that weren't so much, you know, involving the trading, but it seems like a lot of you guys do want to see trade, so I think we're going to implement that. But the two other comments here, one came from Arvid Berggren saying that grinder in the second round would probably be nasty bottom six shut down forward. I agree, and, uh, you know, we're going to see if Jackson Thorne can actually turn into something there. And then finally, the last comment here came from Drayden Pletz saying... Uh, you should give the two K brothers A's and keep Eric Sider as the captain. It would be like the Vancouver Canucks when the scene brothers both wore A's. So that is something we can definitely do in this video. Not going to take very long to do, but first things first, we got to get to the entry draft. All right, so guys, let's get started on the draft here. Uh, should be an interesting year, and we are going to make a trade this year, so that should definitely be fun. Um, the trade we would be making is moving up to pick number like 9 or 10 around there. Um, Matthew Grandpierre, I would love to get into the team here pretty soon, and uh, that is kind of our main target. I also have this Jesper Forstrom pinned out. Um, I don't know if he's going to turn out to be elite, but you know, worst thing or worst case scenario, he is a top six. Maybe even though if he has a four-year ETA, you know, I'd prefer if he was elite, but we'll see what happens. And then after that, I do have the rest of the guys I want to draft pinned out here, and we'll see who actually turns out and who doesn't. This guy looks good, uh, Alexander Zaitsev. I'm really excited for him, especially at pick 100 or so. Um, I think we've got pick 86, so that's probably where we'll take him. Um, and then we'll see with the rest of these guys, you know, nobody really is guaranteed in here, but a lot of guys are, you know, borderline guaranteed to be what potential they have. So anyways, let's get started on the draft. We're going to make a trade here and I just need to figure out who the trade is going to be with. Who's got pick nine Hamilton, you know, Hamilton could be a good team to trade with. So they've got pick number nine, uh, they're a conservative buyer. So I'm going to offer them Roussel because Roussel does not fit the team. I'd rather hold on to Hill and Thorn. Um, and we're hopefully getting a defenseman that actually does fit our system here. Again, we'll see what happens there, but you know, hopefully he does turn out to be, or if we can get Matthew Gramp here, hopefully he does turn out to be what we're expecting him to be. Um, and then I'm also going to offer um, Matthias Hoodler here. Again, a undrafted free agent, but um, you know, those two guys should, oh, I've got too many goalies. Do they have an undrafted goalie? Um, it's probably going to be like their worst goalie too, isn't it? Yep, Ty Austin. Okay, um, so we can take Ty Austin. He's undrafted, but um, is there any way I could get a pick next year from them? Like, that would be really nice if I could somehow snag a third-round pick off of... Wow, they have a lot of third-round picks. My goodness. Um... Or could I get Thunder Bay's second rounder? If I could get Thunder Bay's second rounder in this too, I would be super stoked because that's an extra second round pick. That would be really helpful. And uh, let's see if this deal goes through. And it does not, so I assume it's the second round pick. Um, can we try one of the thirds instead? Go with like Halifax's pick. 
Let's give that a shot, see if it turns out, and nope. I get the feeling it's the trade here, or it's the it's the pick. Um, what about two years from now? Can we get their third round or two years from now? That would be really nice. No, okay, can we just try this? This should go through, I would assume, so we have more value, and uh, let's see. Trade accepted. Okay, so we get Ty Austin and the ninth overall pick, so we have Matthew Grandpierre essentially lined up at this point. And then we also have pick number 22. So let's get started here. That's the only trade I wanted to make. That was the only one that actually made sense to me. So let's see what happens here. And all right, good players drafted. Had all these picks up to pick nine. So I know Grand Pierre is going to be at least like 76, 77 rated. Willie Marco as well is uh, definitely NHL ready, but we're taking Grand Pierre again. Just the defensive, you know, or lack of defensive stability this team has had. We need to get guys that we can develop properly, and Grand Pierre, I believe we can. I think, honestly, we're going to leave him in junior for a year, even though he's quote-unquote NHL ready. I don't trust that, and uh, I want to make sure he is actually ready to go when we draft him. Wow, Marco fell to pick 12. Two defensemen taken after Grand Pierre. So, yeah, I think uh, both the Seahawks and the Wing or Wild Wings were looking to grab Grand Pierre and we kind of snaked in and stole him so I'm really happy with that and for the next pick I'm going to go with Jesper Forstrom I've been watching him forever does he turn out to be elite yes he does let's go okay so 61 overall left wing sniper um he's definitely going to need some development but where he's playing at you know we could uh we could try to put him into the AHL I don't know if that would be the best scenario necessarily but he might get the nod over Grand Pierre this year, actually, which could be an interesting situation. I think that might be what we do, actually. So, yeah, Jesper Forstrom, um, hopefully going to turn out to be a great player for this team in the future. Again, we have to develop him properly, but I think he is going to be easier to develop than some of these other guys. Uh, Brendan Watton was a pretty nice player. Who else was really good in here after Forstrom? Um, Goulet. Francois Goulet was a really nice pick. Uh, trainer was good, and then it dropped off potential-wise. Oh, Brossois. I forgot Matthew Brossois was in here, and yeah, he's a very nice pick too. 75 overall. So yeah, um, definitely some good players in there. I think the next guy we're going to end up taking is probably going to be... Oh, it could be Vita Loma, but I don't trust that. He's probably going to be like a medium nine. You know, we could either go with Vita Loma, or not Vita Loma, we could either go with McMuffin or we could go with Nilstrop, but I think I have to take the goalie here just because I want to have those prospects to develop in into the future, even if it means they sit for a year or two and our team is, you know, not as good, but that's okay. So I'm going to take Isaiah McMuffin and, all right, he's a 48 overall, so not great, but a second round goalie hopefully will develop properly and, uh, you know, at just 18 years old, he has a lot of time ahead of him. All right, so for our third round pick, uh, Nils Trop was 61 overall, so maybe he was the better pick. We'll see if, uh, I mean, he got drafted to Shakutami too, so yeah, he's probably going to develop pretty quickly on that team. Um, there was actually like a surprisingly high amount of elites in this round, and yeah, we got one of them, so that's good. Uh, besides that... Oh, wow. Okay, that second round, end of the second round, really took a nosedive as far as quality went. But uh, after that, I don't want Clefbaum. I want not Lutzer either. I want Zaitsev. That's the guy that I am set on at this point. So, yeah, Alexander Zaitsev, two year ETA, potentially medium elite, probably a two way forward. Actually, uh, his puck skills are up there. He could be a playmaker. Okay, so let's see. Alexander Zaitsev is a. <laughs> 70 overall medium elite playmaker at pick number 86 he's got five star puck skills at 19 years old that's crazy okay so he's uh potentially going to be a very good player for us in the future as well definitely further developed than uh aiden aiden hill or what's his name i think it's eight i might be wrong it might be austin uh, Prohorkin, pretty nice pick there too. Defensive defenseman, medium top four. Um, after that, let's see. 
This guy wasn't too bad. Andre Sumalitis, I believe is how you say it. I might be wrong there. Lutzer was a medium starter, so we definitely got the right goalie. Um, but yeah, just Zaitsev have such a sick pick. I'm really, really happy with that pick. He's going to be awesome moving forward. And uh, after this, I'm going to go with Weston Raleigh. Uh, Two-year ETA again. I'm just, you know, I'm hoping he turns out to be something good. And, well, not guaranteed two year, but I'm hoping two years. So, Weston Rally is a oh, medium top nine. Okay, playmaking center again. Um, it's not great there. Again, high puck skills, but that's about it. So, yeah, lots of work for him to get done still. And uh, not the most spectacular fourth round pick, but again, you draft on potential after round three. And honestly, uh, Blomstrand probably would have been a better pick, but that's okay. Um, there's probably quite a few guys that would have been better picks. Maybe not. Um, hmm. Wow, okay. This is a really weak draft overall still. Like, I mean, not saying we haven't gotten some better prospects, but overall the draft has not been spectacular. All right, over to the next pick, which is pick 150. I think I have to go with Olivo because he's the only guaranteed potential player in here. And at a medium starter, I'll take that in round five all day. So, yeah, I'm going to go with Mika Levo. And he turns out to be 54 overall, 18 years old. Not bad. Okay, so, um, you know, potential backup goalie there in the future. That could be really good. Um, after that, who else got picked that was good? Medium elite and Greer there. Dallas Greer goes to Red Deer. Um, pretty weak overall, though. Again, like that start of the fifth or sixth round there was not good uh Pitkinen again not a great pick but not terrible um Stanley Sanchez as well you know goes to Shakutami a strong team so after that I was looking at this Matsonen guy you know a shoot and pinch I'm hoping he's a low elite but uh no guarantees there right so I think yeah I'm going to go with Matsonen um totally a shot in the dark but hopefully he turns out if he is 17 years old too <sighs> okay he's a low seven so not a great pick there finally we fan on one but you look at our picks overall like mind you we got um matthew grand pierre ninth overall and then jesper forstrom so two top notch prospects in the first round those guys were totally worth it and then after that you know it really hasn't been that bad zaitsev mcmuffin those guys probably guaranteed um cpha players at some point here and then after that you know quite a few dark horses but overall still it's been a really good draft and i can't complain um who's this guy spencer young uh pretty nice player there Geisberger turned out to be 57 overall as a medium starter so he's not a bad pick by any means either um and then for our last pick here we are going to go with another guy i saw that you know could be good i'm not sure if he's going to be um definitely not any of these guys actually i did look at traverse but again just don't don't really want to try and take a defensive potential like that so instead i'm going to take a risk on ludwig hendrickson and you know worst case scenarios we could trade him okay he's a medium starter 56 overall so that's actually really solid so yeah hendrickson might actually be the better pick out of the two goalies we took this this year um and Levo's a really good pick too, so yeah. Yeah, I'm really happy with how this draft has turned out. We definitely got some trading pieces for the future at least. So anyways, guys, we're going to simulate past the rest of the draft, only with about seven or eight picks. Didn't look like anybody crazy got drafted there, but I am so, so stoked for this draft class. I think the first four players we drafted there are going to be, you know, um, very impactful players on the Comets in the future and how their success goes as a team so Zaitsev definitely going to get playing time maybe we'll put Forstrom and Zaitsev together that could be a play um and then Grand Pierre I want to give time same with Isaiah McMuffin those guys need time to develop in my opinion and then I'm not sure on Henriksen or Levo who we're going to be keeping who we might move on eventually from but yeah this uh allowing the trade definitely makes um, makes everything a lot more flexible and allows us to get better prospects in the future too. So, I mean, overall, this team is already in pretty darn good shape. Um, Austin Lampman's actually one of our better players now, which is crazy. Um, and yeah, like all of our defense is just unfortunately not taking the step they needed to. Uh, so 
We'll see how the team shapes up for this upcoming year. I know it's going to be hard to crack the forward roster for a guy like uh, Joshua Shields. Like, I want him to be playing in the NHL, but I don't know if he's going to have a spot, honestly. Um, besides that, like, I don't know who else in the system here. Ratchnik should be playing. He might not be. Um, Grand Pierre we haven't signed yet. And, like, Leno I want in the team. Christensen I want in the team. There's so many guys that I want to get into the team, and I just don't know if they're going to fit or not. So, yeah, um, been an interesting little bit here with this team and how, you know, players are developing and such. Overall, the team looks really good still. And, yeah, as you can see, Alexander Zaitsev have shot way up from 18 to 19 years old. Um, I don't even know where he was ranked before, but he is better. He's a better prospect than Jeffrey Higgins, and Jeffrey Higgins just put up a 67-point year in 65 games. Like, there are a lot of good players in here. The only thing that I'm really hoping for next year is that there is potentially a, uh, a what do you call it, like a, a top-tier defenseman that we could potentially move up for because this team needs that number one go-to guy on the back end that we just don't have yet still so anyways let's sim to the resign phase here um i'm gonna get all the scouts and stuff done quickly and then we'll get to contracts all right so when we look at the rfas we're seeing reinhardt ty austin a couple guys like that i don't know who we're gonna be keeping who we're gonna be letting go this upcoming off season here but uh there are guys where it's like no we should hang on to him and other guys where it's like yeah maybe we let him go i'm not sure so Looks like uh, Felipe Myers is one of those guys where it's like he might want to go at this point. Um, it seems like him and Taylor Shea have kind of been talking, been like, yeah, we're done with this team. Yeah, yeah, we're not re-signing. But I want them to re-sign because they're good enough forwards. Um, Ratchenik wants another one-year deal. I don't know what he's waiting for. Like, he's probably not going to get promoted. It would be better for him to just sign a long-term deal, stick with the team, and go with that. Um... We'll go two million bucks for two years for Garcia. You know, Billy Garcia has been pretty solid for this team overall. Uh, I'm going to say Hamannick and Sherov are probably confined to the AHL at this point. They're our top AHL players just because of their potential. Um, but Christensen definitely going to make the team here this upcoming year. You know, hopefully as long as he develops a little bit more. Put up 49 points in 78 games in the AHL. Like he was not bad by any means, but... Uh, yeah, just a strange one there. Um, let's actually offer these guys. Well, Ayafalo, I think, is done. 34 years old now. I mean, he's played a ton of games with this team, but yeah, I I just, I think he is done. I don't see us re-signing him. Um, Felipe Meyer, on the other hand, he wants a three-year contract. I'm going to offer him four million bucks, see if that's enough to sway his decision. And then Taylor Shea, same kind of deal, offer him four mil see if that's enough um it might not be honestly just because these guys are very picky about their contracts and you know their play time and everything daryl perry gonna get two years because him and garcia i kind of see on the same page four million bucks for five years for Mackey is really good um, i'll totally take that and again the money doesn't matter it's more just the term right so for five years for four years we're trying to get these guys to stay um after that grand pierre we are going to give a year to he gets another year in Gatineau. Um, he's actually playing, funny enough, he's actually playing alongside Higgins, who we haven't signed yet either. Um, but two-way contract for Leno again, I don't understand how that's beneficial, but I guess it is. Um, Silverberg's 25 now. He is a minor top six defender, so we'll give him one year. That's fine. It's not like we're signing in a whole bunch of new guys. We are signing in a couple here. Like Flynn, I don't know if he's, he's a fifth round pick. I don't know if he's the best player to go out and sign right now. Um, over a guy like Zaitsev. Like, yeah, we can sign him. It doesn't mean he's going to be playing. Like you can see in Gatineau, Higgins is playing alongside Grand Pierre there. So those guys should be lighting it up, but we'll see what happens. Uh, I want to say Jakob DePita might be done, honestly. I don't see how he could... Uh, he, he could make this team. There is the potential there, but... Who else do we have down here? Cider, Klotz, those guys should all sit. I want to get Forstrom in the team this year. 
but you never know. He might just shoot up like crazy playing overseas too. I doubt it. I would rather make sure he gets top playtime in the AHL to shoot up. So I think we offer Forstrom the contract. Um, Braden Hill, 66 point season in junior. I don't know if he can go that much farther in junior. I mean, 66 points is spectacular, but I mean, it's a huge jump from 10 points, but I just, you know, I'm not guaranteed that he's going to grow when he plays there versus if he plays in our AHL system, he is guaranteed going to grow because I'm going to give him the play time, right? So, um, Trafford was undrafted. I think we're buying out Trafford. He's going to be done. Yeah, so James Trafford will release. Pedro Yele, I'm going to offer a contract to, uh, even though I doubt he actually fits our team. Um, Jared Sumal, again, 22 years old, only 63 rated. He is going to be gone. Um, Hannah Linen, sixth round pick by the comments, hasn't really developed either. Like, there's just a lot of guys in here where it's like, they haven't shot up. I wish they had, but they haven't. And we have to sort it out because of that. So by the looks of it, Kim Whiting going to be in the team finally this year, which pushes Wallstead out. And at 25 years old, oh, he's got a lot of good close players on this team. I mean, he could be our third string goalie that just sits in the NHL for whenever we have goalie injuries. I think that's actually going to be the case for what we do with him. And then we'll have Grigorenko and Blue just be playing in the minors there. Um, Bure could be up next. I mean, he shot up quite significantly. He grew about 12 ratings. But then again, if McMuffin grows 12 ratings or more, he's going to be our number one option for the future. But yeah, unfortunately, Whiting just didn't really turn out the way I expected him to. And uh you know, we have to deal with that, but, um, let's see, overall for defense, we got one, two, three, four, five, six with Griffin, Leno is seven, um, but if anything, I would say it's probably Troy Stetcher sitting, um, we got Christopher McKenna, yep, yep, um, Elias Sidhu has not been getting playtime because of where he's at and how he fits this team, so if anything, we're going to be cutting him loose too to clear up spots for guys like Dopita and Yele and guys like such. Um, but, you know, we have enough room that we could probably hold on to Elias Sidhu here for another year. Um, Tyson, or Tyson, Tyler Riddle, uh, I think we should offer a contract to as well. And that's all of the defense, I believe. Um, yeah. For right wingers, you know, we got our top three kind of guys signed, top four to five kind of guys signed there, honestly. Um, and Carlotti's one of the only guys I'm like genuinely interested in keeping around with this team. Cogliano and Volkov are both undrafted players, and I'm like, eh, they're nothing special, they're nothing crazy. Um, I might offer Cogliano a contract just for one more year. Which is, yeah, I'm okay with that. Uh, I follow's gone. We're definitely offering Forstrom a contract. See, Frank Klotz just has not shot up the way I expected him to. Um, but he's going to be competing with a guy like... Um, Jesper Forstrom for playtime, which is not great, but that's the way it's probably going to be. Tuca Salio, again, another grinder that eh, I'm not exactly interested in at this point. Um, I have follow Stetcher, Nikolishin, and Mackey are all going to be upset that he doesn't sign, so I'm just going to release him now. Um, so let's go with Klotz. Let's give him a contract this year, too. Uh, that's definitely four or five guys on the left wing. And then we have centers. <laughs> and then we have a lot of centers. So, yeah. Um, Hamannick's the start of the AHL. But then we got Thorn Guerrero, Zaitsev, Higgins. Like, we got so many guys. Um...
See, Zaitsev only put up four points. I know he's going to put up more than four points if he plays in our team this year. So we're going to offer him a contract, and we're going to offer Flynn a contract. I'm going to trust in the OHL this year that they're going to you know, help promote Braden Hill. He's going to get the playtime he deserves as a 61 overall elite player. Um, but, you know, if I check in and he's not playing games, then I'll sign him. So that's kind of the only real worries I have for player development. I'm okay letting guys go that don't have as high a ceiling. And, uh, you know, we'll see who signs. I don't think everybody's going to sign. I think it's worth it to leave certain guys unsigned or playing in junior for another year or two. And, uh, I think I've signed everybody I wanted to at this point. I'm going to be releasing certain players, but let's see who does and doesn't sign. All right, so Felipe Myers does resign. Blue just signs. Perry signs. Flynn cannot accept due to full roster. Cloth signs. Leno resigns. Yele signs. Forstrom signs. Wallstead signs. Hamannick signs. Shea signs. Sheroff signs. Mackey signs. Silverberg signs. Ratchnik signs. Garcia signs. McKenna signs, Reinhardt signs, Cogliano signs, Riddle signs. DePito can't or DePita can't sign, but Zaitsev does. Okay, so there's two guys who didn't sign that I wanted to sign. So those guys were I mean we can release Volkov. That's uh not an issue. We can release him to go out and sign a guy like DePita. Um so we'll offer him the deal. Anybody else that I can release in place for Flynn? Um, I mean, 72, 22. Is there any centers that are older than like 22, 23 years old in here? The only guy might be... I don't think there is anybody, actually. Um, you know, Hamannick has been pretty consistent in the uh, AHL. He puts up around 50-point seasons every year. I think he's a great player for the system, not so much for the actual NHL, but... um. I don't know if we even have a spot for uh, Grayson Flynn here. I mean, he was a fifth-round pick, and he's a playmaker who's got puck skills and no speed, which uh, isn't exactly the best combo. We have a lot of playmakers when you go down this list and look at guys like... It's going to go all the way back to the top. Okay, so starting at Hamannick, when you go down this list and look, like, we've got playmakers. That's not an issue. The only problem is that with a playmaker like Grayson Flynn, there's better playmakers. Zaitsev's going to be better. Like, it's too bad, but I think we're going to have to release him. As much as I hate to say it, I think I'm going to have to. Like, yeah, Braden Hill's going to be quite a bit. He's going to be significantly better, potential-wise, as a playmaker. So, I'm sorry, Grayson, but... uh yeah, just it doesn't make sense to go out and sign him as much as I want to. Like Grayson Flynn should be in the team at 72 overall, but he is 22 years old as well. So yeah, that's all we're going to do for free agent signing and stuff like that. And honestly, the team is looking really good. Um, so if we advance another day here, we should get Dapita. Yeah, Jakob Dapita does sign. So yeah, that looks really good. Um, we definitely have extra or additional defense, but uh, yeah, that's how the team is kind of shaping up at this point. Ty Austin, we're not signing either. It doesn't make sense to sign him. We have enough goalies, and uh, yeah, yeah, that is how the team's looking. Ilya Mikhaev, we might be able to swing a trade for, but I don't know if you guys would let me do that yet, or if I have to wait until the draft. I have to wait over a year kind of thing, which, you know, would make sense, but um yeah, as you can see, a whole bunch of guys we've acquired recently are like top end potential and talent in this roster. So the other guy I'm, you know, sad about, but we might have to move eventually is Byron Reinhardt. Um, you know, he just never grew, unfortunately, but he looked like he could have, you know, boatloads of potential and it just never came around. Um, Higgins, Grand Pierre again, let him play. Let him play in the system. Um, or in junior. And the goalies I'm excited for. I'm really hoping having two 80 plus rated goalies this year will actually make a difference as far as how our team performs. So, anyways, let's check out the free agent market. There's not going to be much on here probably, but um, Lafreniere is available. 
drafted first overall by the Quebec Nordiques, funny enough. So, oh, how I would love to go out and get a guy like Tony Antilla, or Antia, however you say his name. Well, as new ski again, Quebec drafted. Uh, Visentin, not terrible. Trafford's our old player. Rolison, I thought about drafting, I never did. Um, yeah, not great there. What do we have as far as defensemen go? Who are the most expensive defensemen? D'Angelo Honka. Again, all these guys have been drafted, which is too bad, but, uh, you know, some of them look like they could be really good players. If they weren't drafted, man, I would love to pursue them, but... Again, I'm going to stick to that rule of, you know, undrafted slash um, Kelowna drafted only on this roster. So if that means we have to sway deals to make trades to draft top end talent, so be it. But, um, you know, we have drafted pretty well anyway. So I think that's where we're going to wrap it up for the offseason, simulate over to the regular season, get through the sim and get going on that. Alright, so guys, setting captains for the next season, you told me that you would like to see both the K brothers wearing A's this year, so that is exactly what's going to happen. Um, they're all going to be on one line, so it kind of reminds me of like Colorado or somebody like that. And uh, Kim Whiting says he's wearing number 34, we'll go check him out. Um, but I do want to make some roster moves here, but before we even make roster moves, please tell me there's a top 5 defenseman this year. Yes, okay, Gasparitis could be potentially good. Oh, he's offensive too, though, isn't he? Oh, okay, that's just great, isn't it? Okay, um, I'm looking for, like, an elite, like, defensive defenseman, probably. That's my assumption for what I'm going to be aiming for this year. Um, hmm, best goalie at 65. Terrence Lee doesn't look great. Um gonna be a weird draft but man if there's a pinch and shoot elite offensive defenseman i'm obviously gonna want to take him we might have to trade to do that but i don't know if he's even gonna be pinch and shoot so um anyways i do need to shuffle the roster quite a bit here gonna be some strange things going on but you will hopefully understand it as i get through it so i want to move these three guys up i mean technically i want to move four guys up and I don't know if we can. Anyways, I want to move those three guys up, guaranteed. I want to send Stetcher down. I want to send... Uh, I want to send Stetcher and um, Mikhaev down. That's what I want to do. So I think that's all we can do right now. Um, okay, so we can confirm that. And now I got to do rosters. Let's rid of the plus three if I switch out... Christensen for Ratchnik. So we're going to leave Ratchnik for now. Um, you can see, though, on the defensive end, things are looking a little awkward. Um, Christopher McKenna fits significantly better in the top six here. And him playing with the plus five, I would not be against by any means, especially over a guy like Taylor Shea. Um, huh. This is peculiar, but it could work. Um, so let's try Leno here. I uh, it could work. Probably won't, but it could work. Um, that does mean we have three defensive defensemen in the lineup, though, as well, which is not exactly ideal. Um, that's a lot better. It really is. Um, a 3 5 and 3 like that looks spectacular. Um, as much as I don't want Taylor Shea sitting out, that might have to be the way we do it. Like, this lineup just. God, it's just so good. Like, <laughs> it is easily the best Comets lineup I've put together yet. And, um,. It's not even close. Like, the defense is just so much better with the chemistry that I want to keep this together. I don't know if I can, but I'm going to try. 
And I mean with Leno, we'll always have a plus three on the bottom pair. And then as long as you have at least system fitting defensemen, even without Greg Griffin, like that should be a five, three and three. Cause like you look at Jimmy Denny, he, he puts it together still like that. But I think we're going to leave it like that for now. Um, and pray to God that this, uh, this upcoming draft does have an actual, uh, oh, what's the word? does have a pinch and shoot defenseman like I'm looking for I don't know if that's actually going to be the case but you know one can only hope oh no that's what it is that's what I'm missing yeah yeah I got it now I got it Charlie K's going there Declan Hughes goes back and we swap him out for Ratchnik should be a plus five. I think it's only a plus three. That's the max I can get on it, um, which is too bad, but I think that's how we're going to have to run things here. Yeah, we could go like that instead. That might be slightly better. Yeah, okay. I mean, plus threes across the board on the power play is really, really solid. Um, and yeah, this team just looks really good overall still, so... That looks spectacular offensively um, on the power play here, four-man power play. I would like to have a defenseman on each unit, preferably. Um, and I actually want Valcourt there. Okay. And then on the PK, again, the PK should be stacked. And for whatever reason, it's not. <laughs> um, probably because we're tossing a guy like Joshua Shields on the penalty kill over top of a guy like... Uh, they're all at center, aren't they? Yeah over top of, you know, a winger that can actually play defense like uh, Ratchnik. <laughs> oh, maybe not. Okay. Lampman, Perry, who am I missing? I'm missing one two-way forward. We got Lampman, we got Perry. It's Garcia. Yeah, that's who I was missing. Okay, so plus one's on both. That's how it's supposed to look. And then this looks really good. Okay, yeah. So that's that's the team. I, I hope you guys caught all of that. And that, you know, if you did miss something, that you go back and actually check out what you missed on, you know, the play pause feature on YouTube. Because you should be doing that if you're not. Um, I'm going to put my three three-ish best defensemen in here. I mean, Greg Griffin might not be one of our best defensemen. Was it Jimmy Denny? No, it was Greg Griffin. Where did he go? Right there. Ta-da! Okay, so yeah, that's how the lineup's looking. It looks really, really scary. Um, And it's good. It is a very, very good lineup. So I'm happy with it i think the team's the best it's ever been and you know hopefully we can continue to improve this team through you know minor league growth with guys like klotz and forstrom and zaitsev and you know hopefully jackson thorne he's been sitting down there for a while now yeah I'll make it two seasons now but he has improved right he has improved every season so you can't knock him on that wrestling boots i have again first year was bad but then the last two have been really good um so hopefully he can make that final step towards the nhl um and you know wallstead probably gonna be the odd man out here i would much rather have blue just playing because he is only 20 versus 25 so yeah um I think that's where I'm going to leave it for editing lines. I just got to get the scouting and stuff done now, um, as well as, you know, remove some stupid line changes and such. But uh, why are we playing it like this? Is this really how we're going to do things around here? Like, yikes. <sighs> I think I have to play it like this. As much as I don't want to, I think I have to because Mikhaev is just so good that... It doesn't make sense not to play him in here. Um, Stetcher is not a great fit by any means. Um, so if we go... Stetcher in here instead, maybe? Nope. Actually, I'm putting Hillman in. That makes so much more sense. Why would I not put... Yeah, Dallas Hillman should definitely be playing there instead.
All right. So I think that's the lineup there for the AHL. Um, the three-man PK looked stupid because of the way it was set up. Apparently, Mikhaev doesn't fix that. Okay. Um, he should fix this, though, because he is a two-way forward. Which he does not. Um... Well, Boots I have. Boots I have fixes it. Yay, okay. So I messed up my lineup for essentially nothing, but that's okay. Um, so yeah, that's the team. It's uh, been a bit of a <laughs> struggle to get the team into a really good spot, but I think the Comets are in a fantastic spot. And uh, I'll be back with you guys at the start of the 2028-29 regular season with uh, you know my scouting done and all that good stuff. All right, so guys, looking at the draft class first, that is the thing I'm most excited about here if we get a scouting report, is Kasparitis is a shooting pinch. Oh, baby. Um, there's potential there. There's a hell of a lot of potential there. Um, and I wonder if Skylar Tapper is potentially not elite or maybe it's Brandon Moran Moran Brandon Moran I don't know um yeah still just waiting on a lot of scouting reports here not a whole lot scouted but Casparitis very well could be a player we pursue um you guys saw it there first shoot and pinch supposedly shoot and pinch there's no guarantee that that actually means what it does but um he would be the player I would like to pursue for the upcoming draft anyways um for the team ratings this year, I think we got the strongest team yet. Um, yeah, 97 offense, 85 defense still, and 81 goaltending. You compare that to a team like um, the Lumberjacks, you never know. Like, the Comets are not bad, right? So the year I say we're not bad, we're actually a good team, is probably the year we tank it. So knock on wood, I'm, I'm just saying, but... Um, yeah, let, let's see how this goes. I am going to go and show you guys the, uh, what do you call it, the new players we've added to this team and what numbers they're wearing and so on here. So the first guy we got in here for new Comet players is Joshua Shields, drafted in, I want to say 2026, might have been 2025 actually. Um, let's double check that. Yeah, he was 2025, wears number 67, he is a playmaker, and uh, sitting on our fourth line currently should be a really good addition to the team at 83 overall. The next addition to the Kelowna Comets here is Brett Christensen, um, a two-way forward that we drafted 15th overall in 2027, I believe. I might be wrong on that, and no, I'm not. That is surprising. Um, but yeah, anyways, a two-way forward. I, you gotta love the stash. Like he is just, oh, he's a beauty. He is a beauty, Brett Christensen. But uh, probably gonna be sitting on the bench this year more as a taxi squad kind of player. But wearing number 41 at 79 overall definitely has a potential future in the CPHA. After Brett Christensen, we've got Christopher McKenna, um, going to be a defensive defenseman. He's quite a build too at six foot four. Um, actually, how big is he? 6'4", 216. Um, so yeah, definitely a big body. We drafted him in 2025 as well. Uh, where's number 89? And going to be paired with Jimmy Denny for this upcoming season. Should be a good addition to the team as well. And uh, only 78 overall, but hopefully he'll improve quickly. All right, guys. And finally, we've got Kim White in here wearing number 34. I have... Uh, edited the equipment so it looks absolutely awesome uh here you can take a look at his face here and uh you know for a swedish goalie um didn't expect him to look like that honestly but you know that's that's ea's game simulation engine for you anyways um yeah hopefully going to be the goalie of the future here for the comets for the next couple seasons and uh yeah that's the new players so now that i've taken you guys through the whole you know team setup system fit all that good stuff i'm gonna be Going through the simulation here, I'll do half a season sim, show you guys where we're looking at at that 41 game mark or so, and then I will be back to, uh, you know, commentate the second half uh, after we're done that sim. So guys, at the halfway point of the season, the 41 game mark, the Comets have a 22-17-2 record. They're on pace for about 44 wins this year, which would like probably just miss the playoffs. But, I mean, Charlie K is almost on pace for a 
60-60 year if he can keep it up. Man, that would be fantastic. Usually, though, with the trend of this team is that our second half of the year is always weaker than our first half, and this year is not looking great. Only 46 points this season. I mean, it doesn't put us nearly in a terrible spot compared to... We are playing in the strongest division, I guess, in the Pacific, but... Yeah, not exactly the uh, not exactly the strongest season from the Comets. I'm sure we're sitting in a pretty good spot overall in the league right now, but yeah, just uh, just hasn't really been our year. Like we're currently, where are we sitting? Currently sitting in 16th, which is technically a playoff spot, but it's not just the way the divisions work. So yeah. Um, it's a weird, weird situation right now, and we might end up missing the playoffs this year, especially when the only team that's below us, I believe, is Abbotsford. Or is it Lethbridge? Who is below us in the standings? Um, oh, it's Calgary. Never mind. Yeah, the Aces are above us, which makes no sense, but... um. Yeah, anyways, currently sitting in 16th, you know, the team's not in a bad spot by any means. Um, Charlie K is looking fantastic this year. Uh, besides that, you know, Jason K right there with him because it's the K brothers. They're just awesome. Um, <laughs> and then when we go and look at the entire league here, Matthews has 71 points. He's got, he's a goal a game at 31 years old. That is absurd. Oh my goodness. Jesus, Austin Matthews, that's insane. Okay, so yeah, he's on pace for a crazy year. Charlie K currently sitting in 6th place league scoring-wise, so he would really have to pick it up production-wise to actually catch a bunch of these guys um, just because they're producing at a higher rate than him. So yeah, that's how the team's looking right now. Um, you know, nothing crazy from our team. The goalies are honestly not good this year. Quincy Torres is sick. He is really a good goalie. Um, I'm surprised he hasn't shot up more. Cattler's got 20 wins this season already. Ralph Burkhoff with 19. Like Our guys are just sitting down here with like a puny like 11, 12 wins. Like, yeah, Whiting's got 12 wins. Cool. That's not good enough to win. So, um, and 10 wins for Weinrich. Like, yeah, just unfortunately not really looking like our year this year. Todd Emerson going off for... The uh, Sudbury Bruisers, Lindros, 30 points, 20 goals already. That's pretty good. So, yeah, that's the rookies. That's the team. Um, the other thing I want to show you, because I don't really update you guys on it too much, is our record book. Um, I'm actually interested to see, like, how close. I know the K brothers are right around the, like, 500 point mark, I think, now. They're they're getting up there. Um but when we look at the entire team, Eric Sider's with 572 in points. So, yeah, he's doing just fine. Um, he also leads the team in penalty minutes, seasons played. Um, what else? And goals. So, yeah, that all makes sense. Tristan Weinrich is actually probably going to catch Alexander Georgiev here pretty soon. And then games played, Felipe Myers just hasn't gotten injured. So, yeah, uh, that's how the team's looking. Assists Charlie K with 325. That's crazy. So... That's our team right now, um, you know, nothing special really, not yet anyways, but uh, let's see if uh, the second half of the season can go a bit better for the Comets here. Alright, so guys, to end off the 2028-29 season simulation, the Comets put up a 46-31-5 record for a total of 97 points this year, finishing 5th in the Pacific again. Um, this year we see the Kingston Kings go off. Oh my goodness, Kingston had a year. Wow, okay. Um, yeah, they're really good. <laughs> um, so yeah, Kingston just has a crazy good season. Um, the Comets finish 15th in the league. Abbotsford misses at 16th. Vancouver misses at 17th. Oh my goodness, and Sherbrooke makes it in. Man, Calgary wasn't even that bad. They were 21st, and they were the worst team in our division. The worst team in the league is the Halifax Highlanders this year. Ottawa down low there, too, on this uh, this list, so that's too bad. Um, looks like we might be making trades with Hamilton two years in a row if they end up where they're supposed to. 
Uh, so Charlie K with 101 points, Jason K with 100. So that's, yeah, that's really good to see. Um, just the third time we've had players break the 100 point mark. Uh, Valcourt scores 55 points this year. That's great to see. Eric Sider with 78, Zajac with 85, Eudes with 86. Um, who else was a bit of a breakout player this year? Greg Griffin with 24 is definitely not a bad season. He definitely improved, but he also got injured right at the end of the year. Um, besides that, our goalies see 24 wins for Kim Whiting. That's not too bad. And then 22 wins for Tristan Weinrich. Looking at the entire league, for goalies anyways, here we see Vasilevsky with 52 wins. That's pretty insane. Um... Jelkovic was up there with 38 too. Best rookie goes to Leonardo Lindros. No surprise there. Red Deer's number one guy scores 35 goals in his rookie season as well as 64 points. And as far as all skaters go, McKinnon finishes with 130 points. Um, Matthew LeBanc up there too. He definitely shot up the list. Um, Jeremy Simon's crushing it there. And yeah, lots of 100-point scorers this year, a lot more than I could say there was a couple years ago. Uh, Windsor, Jay Joseph there, definitely had a great season too. Quinn Hughes with 87 points leads all defensemen. And, you know, hopefully we get our hands on a good defenseman in the upcoming offseason. But, uh, you know, that Casper Reitus guy, we're definitely eyeing. I don't know how long it's going to take for him to actually get NHL ready. It says a year. Um, he's offensively inclined, but man, I would love to pick him up. He would be a spectacular defenseman to add to this defensive core and would eventually become the number one piece on it, probably. So anyways, um, we are going to get to the playoffs here in this episode too, and let's see how the team or who the team we're matching up against is. Oh, and one more little uh, little fun fact for you guys. Um, Alexander Zaitsev shot up to an 82. 82! He scored 64 points on the Burnaby Bolts. That is insane. Like, he should be playing in our team right away here for this upcoming series. Balance, shoot, energy, balance. That's what he plays. My goodness, like, this is just... <laughs> He was easily our best growing player this year. Um, Grigoranko got up to a 79 as well. But man, like this this team has got some players on it. Forstrom up to a 65, so not great there. How many points did he put up? 34, 28 goals. That's insane. Um, yeah, geez, okay. I mean, 21 goals for Zaitsev too is pretty ridiculous. But um, yeah, the team is, you know, they're definitely in playoff shape. It's more just a matter of, you know, where is Zaitsev going to fit in this lineup, for one, because we have a bunch of playmakers. Um, and two, are we actually going to be able to win a series here, or what's going to happen? Because the team is definitely in worse shape than they have been. So, hmm. I think we play it like that for now. And I want Wyden in net. He got more wins. So, yeah, that's what we're going to do for the lineup. And we will be taking on the Nanaimo Nailers 60 win team, best in the division. Oh boy, here we go. This is going to be another ass kicking if things go anywhere near what I'm expecting them to. Um, interesting setup here for the team. Um, in Abbotsford, but no, we're looking at Nanaimo. That's the team I'm actually interested in. Why? I don't know. That is alphabetical. Never mind. Nanaimo. <laughs> they got Kyle Connor. Jeez, buddy. And they got Philip Forsberg. And yeah, um, <laughs> man, this team is so good. Oh, and they got Grayson Lidecker too. Oh, man, I wish we had picked him up. Jeez, buddy. Jeez. Honestly, our team isn't that far off from this team. I would say that their defense is definitely, like, it's significantly better, but their offense, not so much, honestly. Like, we're right there with them, and 
we'll see what our team can get done here moving forward into this playoff series, but who knows, honestly, it could go either way. Alrighty, guys, so we are starting off the playoffs here for this series um or for this season i guess we're taking on the nanaimo nailers and uh i forgot to show you guys but the uh burnaby bolts actually did really well they finished quite high and uh we had some pretty prolific scorers on this team too this year um see reinhardt finished with 65 points and didn't grow at all meanwhile alexander zaitsev put up 64 points and shot up from a 72 and 82 doesn't exactly add up, but okay, I'm not going to complain about it. Like, Forstrom also was really good this year. Um, but when we look at the Burnaby Bolts record, they might actually be the team to follow this postseason. Um, simply because they finished with 112 points, were third in their division, and fifth in the entire uh, AHL so that's actually really good um, I'm super impressed with how they did and uh, you know there is a good team down there so anyways we're gonna start advancing we're taking on the nailers I'm not expecting a lot from the comments but you never know they might surprise me and game one and four. Oh my god 10 goals against ouch that's just brutal okay and game one's a shootout loss for the bolts yikes okay so this is not great anyways into game two of the playoffs 4-3 loss spectacular Kelowna. wow you guys are really killing it and then in the ahl we see another shootout loss 4-3 toronto's taking uh taking the bolts apart so that's really sad um greg griffin's back though so maybe that'll make a difference honestly i'm not expecting it to like this team is just not playing well unfortunately and we're going to have to deal with that, even though it's probably probably going to be a pretty poor result again this season, which is too bad. Like, I need to see the defense improve, and they just haven't, unfortunately. So, 4-2 win. Finally, we get some improvement from the team. You know, they actually fight back a little bit, so that's good to see. So, now we got a 2-1 series in the IHL. Um, in the AHL, it's 3 nothing. They're... They should be eliminated, and for whatever reason, they're not. I guess it's a four-game series. Uh, so, yeah. Anyways, game number four in the NHL. We lose 4-3 in overtime. Oh, we're in the CPHA, I guess. So, do the Bolts get swept here? And, yes, they do. Yikes. That is not good. Okay. At least the Comets didn't get swept this year, but, man, this has been sad. Um, like, really sad so anyways talk about a not dramatic but just a disappointing postseason um i mean you know the comments could surprise us and win three straight but the odds of that happening are so low anyways first period 0-0 zero, zero, 13-9 for the nailers um after the first second period it's 5-1 game <sighs> the k brothers combined for four goals oh my goodness and Badrich Ratchnik gets a goal as well Kucherov gets the lone goal for the Nailers. It looks like the Comets are staying alive here. And a 6-3 finish as Garcia gets one, and then Burakovsky and Connor get two for the Nailers. Kelowna survives for another night. Jason K and Charlie K, your first and second starts of the game. Jason K went off for four points that night. That's crazy. All right, so yeah, he's definitely having a series, but um, yeah, yeah, this is uh, still... Not exactly the place we want to be, but I mean, we are the underdogs technically with Kelowna. So anyways, heading into game number f six now, sorry. Uh, the Comets get their second win there. So first period is 2-2 as Zajac gets both of the Comets goals and Point and Kempe get the two goals for the Nailers. They outshoot us 10-9 after the first. Second period, it's 4-3 as the K brothers combine for two goals in the second, and Wallman gets the lone goal for the Nailers in the third. So it's looking good right now, but looking good doesn't mean anything. Ratchnik scores, that's good. Okay, so that's actually a lot better. Two goal cushion is big. Power play for the Comets doesn't convert. Okay, come on, boys. Oh, there you go. Guy Velcourt getting a goal for the Comets as well. It's a 6-3 game now, and Kelowna is surprising me. They are actually doing really well, and, um, oh, 6-4 game, okay, a little bit of time left, 6-5 game, dear god, oh, they make it through game six somehow, 
just barely squeak it out in the win and uh five six victory there that is crazy weston's ajack your first start of the game with two goals and an assist yikes that was way too close and somehow the comets force a game seven the only series no one of many series possibly to go to seven games here so let's see if other series go to seven besides you know just that one okay all of the eastern conference ones except for one go to seven and we are the only western conference series to go to seven games here so let's get into this let's see how the sim treats us and the comets and first period it's a one nothing game guy valcourt opens the scoring 14 to 8 on shots for the first period Kelowna has found their mojo and they're moving now so that's good to see second period it's a 1-1 game as Braden Point gets the goal for the Nailers it's a 24 to 21 shot lead for the Comets and we are going to jump in and watch game seven third period this should be a very interesting game we're going to toss on the alternates because they're black and they counteract the uh the Nailers jerseys there but they've got a high potent offense as well as a great defense so let's see what happens Game 7, third period, it all comes down to this in the first round series, and the Nailers will take the puck. Tristan Leno over to Nicolishin, Nicolishin into Lampman, Austin Lampman walking in over to Nicolishin, saved, looking for a rebound, shot saved by Garcia there, that was a great chance, and Vasilevsky shuts the door. Now poked away by Leno, Lampman breaking in with Nicolishin, Nicolishin, great move, tries to get through two guys, almost did, but not quite. Buchnevich over to Forsberg now for the Nailers as they break in through center. Now Alex Tuck picks it up. Alex Tuck over to Buchnevich. Great shot. Safe rebound. It goes in. I think that was knocked in by the Kelowna Comets player. Oh no. I think that was knocked into his own net. Yep. Yeah. Oh man. Are you serious? Who knocked that in his own net? I think it was uh, Myers. That goes off the toe, bounces out, and yeah, it was either Myers or Ratchenik who knocked it into their own net. It was save too, but then the Nymo Nailers get a 2-1 lead here with 8 minutes and 45 seconds left. Unassisted from Bujnevich there, but the faceoff goes to the Comets. Now the Nailers breaking in, he's in loose. Honka, centering pass, great shot, but that's blocked and knocked out of harm's way. Shot again, another save off the deflection. Kim Whiting standing on his head here to keep the Comets in it. Kucherov out in front now. Kucherov over to point, Braden Point scores. That is going to be it. I would assume I don't see the Comets getting two goals back, but a very nice goal from the Nailers, and I kind of expected another one to go in here at some point, so yeah. That one was definitely expected. Um, yeah, Greg Griffin just showing his immaturity in the league and definitely gets burned there by Braden Point. Yeah, Kucherov just got or found Braden Point loose in the slot, and Whiting didn't have much of a chance on that. So not much time left here, and it's a two-goal game as the Nailers are looking like they are going to probably walk away with a win. Faceoff going to go to the Comets. Griffin looking to make a pass, finds Angelo Mackey. Mackey streaking in all alone. Angelo Mackey shot saved by Vasilevsky. So again, the Nailers just, you know, really showing off their dominance here against the uh, the Comets, and they do win the faceoff this time. Turned over in front, Jason K scores! And the Comets might not be done yet, as the puck lands right on the right guy's tape in the slot, and Jason K is not going to miss from there. So all of a sudden, this is a one-goal hockey game again, and if the uh, Comets hadn't played such poor defense earlier in the period, this would be a tie game. But anyways, the power play does convert with a minute to spare still, and uh, yeah, Jason K just in the right spot, just beats Vasilevsky over the pad, low glove, and who knows? Who knows? It's playoff hockey. Anything could happen, but uh, Jason K definitely in the right spot there. So face off at center ice, only a minute and nine seconds left. The Comets are going to have to get the puck right away here. And this is turned over, but Griffin going to send it in deep. Lampman laid out at the blue line. Austin Lampman gets hit really hard there. Anyways, not much time left, and looks like Kucherov is going to skate this one in. Now it's turned over. Nikolishin picks it up. Move it. There you go. Garcia over to Nikolishin again. Here comes Nikita Nikolishin cutting back. He makes the wrong play as Sergachev turns it over. Point going to send this one down to Kucherov. 
Kucherov just skates through all our guys. Now Lampman picks it up. Nikolishin breaking in down the wing. Go Nikita. Make a pass in front. Center it. God. Nothing. Absolutely nothing doing here. And Kucherov's going to skate this one out and probably finish because, yeah, Denny is backing way off. So 20 seconds left. Griffin all the way up to Garcia. Here comes Garcia. He's going to dump this puck in deep. And the forecheck is on. Charlie K, big hit on Sergachev, but that's probably not going to matter as there's only eight seconds left. Kucherov, again, backing off. There's no pinch there, and that is going to wrap it up for this game as the Comets are yet again eliminated in the first round of the playoffs. So the main team that the Comets have had to beat here that they just can't seems to be Victoria, but the Naimo another team now to add to that list where it's like, okay, we haven't beat them yet. So yeah, anyways, that is going to be wrapping it up for this game. Kelowna outplays the Nailers, but just could not get it done here in the final frame, giving up one too many goals, and that is it for their playoff hopes. So anyways, guys, it is unfortunate the way things go sometimes, but the Comets do get eliminated in round one yet again. All right, so this season, guys, we see the Shakutami Sharpshooters win the Cup. Um, we also see the Milwaukee Admirals win the Calder, excuse me. Um, anyways, looking at the awards now, we see, obviously, Shakutami Stanley Cup. Um, Kingston wins the Presidents for a change. Victoria makes it to the finals as well as Shakutami who went on to win it um and then for individual awards we see McKinnon get the Art Ross this year as well as the Hart Sergachev wins the Norris Matthews wins the Lady Bing Lindros wins the Calder Gostad with the Conn Smythe deservedly so uh Shesterkin with the Vesna this year Georgiev wins the Jennings and Tilla wins the Masterton Paluzzo wins back-to-back -back Jack Adams that's strange, but okay. Um, Simons wins the Selkie this year. McKinnon wins the Ted Lindsay. And LeBanc is your Rocket Richard winner this year. As far as the playoff tree goes, obviously you watched the Comets get eliminated in round one, but Nanaimo went on to get swept by Victoria in round two, so I don't think it really mattered anyways. Um, the Vipers then went on to beat the Red Hawks, then lose to the Sharpshooters in six. The Sharpshooters went through the Canadians in seven, then the Nordiques in five and then Kingston in five before finally finishing off the Vipers in six. In the AHL we see Milwaukee go through um Manitoba sorry in round one in five games. They then swept the Grand Rapid Griffins. Then they beat the Tucson Roadrunners in seven games and then finally beat out the uh Providence Bruins in six games there. And for the draft lottery, we see Windsor win it this year. Okay, and St. John's is going to get pick number three. So that's probably the team we're going to be trading with. That would be my assumption. And, uh, you know, hopefully they're willing to make a trade. I would really like to make a trade. And, uh, you know, that could work out pretty well. So we'll see what happens there. But uh, Medicine Hat with pick nine and 12 this year, not terrible. But we really... I, I mean, I really want Casparitis. I don't know if you guys think the same. I think he would be a great fit for this team, especially with the pinch and shoot. He would need a year, but who cares? I would give him the year and then put him with a defensive defenseman. So, yeah, Sergei Casparitis could be, you know, a potentially good pick there if we can somehow land him. Anyways, for retiring players to end off this episode, we see... Nikita Kucherov call it quits with 1,444 games played, or what, sorry, 1,444 points scored in 1,253 games. Other 1,000-point scorers consist of Landeskog, Marchand, Couturier, and Duchesne. Uh, Braden Shen, just shy of that mark, has a fifth overall pick. And then Kadri Zabinajad, you know, there's definitely some other good players in here for sure. Um, John Klingberg just wins the cup, so that's good for him. Um, yeah, overall, you know, pretty solid retiree class here this year. Yeah, lots of good defensemen too. And then finally for goalies, we see 
Jordan Bennington, Martin Jones, and Jacob Markstrom as your three kind of big name goalies retiring there. So anyways, now that we are at draft interviews, I think this is where I'm going to wrap it up. Um, you know, I definitely have some players kind of pinned out here as far as who we want to take, but um, yeah, I think that's where we're going to wrap it up. So if you guys did enjoy this episode, make sure you go down below, drop a like on the video, it only takes a second, it really helps out the channel. Also, do feel free to subscribe if you haven't, try to hit 1,200 subs, we literally right there, and also don't forget to leave comments to possibly get featured in an upcoming episode and also hit that notification bell so you never miss when these videos come out but that's going to be it for me this is Tanya signing out and see ya